हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल ए के वी ट्यूटोरियल्स सो आई एम अशोक फ्रॉम ए के वी ट्यूटोरियल्स सो वी आर डिस्कसिंग वेरियस प्रॉब्लम्स रिलेटेड टू मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस वन ऑफ द मोस्ट मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ मटेरियल दैट इज शेयर फोर्स एंड बेंडिंग मोमेंट डायग्राम so it is one of the most important chapter of the subject that is strength of material so we will discuss what is shear force and bending moment diagram and it will be cover in three classes or three videos so the first video so we will discuss the basics of this chapter that is first it will come that is shear force so what do you mean by shear force so in the basics of this subject we have discussed about what is shear force so whenever say this is a body the body is under under load the load is acting tangentially over a surface so it is the force f is acting tangentially over surface so that means so if it is the surface so if this is the surface the load is acting over tangentially over the surface like this so that force is called shear force okay so in three dimensional body if we see so let this is a three dimensional body the load is acting over any surface tangentially so it may be like this or it may be over this surface or it may be over this surface so whenever the load is acting tangentially over the body the load is called shear load or in other words it is called shear force so why it is called shear force because the load which causes the failure of the body by shear is called shear force or shear load so but in this chapter the definition of shear force so i'll come later next what is called bending moment okay bending moment say so let a member member is under load so this is a member member is under some load so thereby the bending of the member takes place so due to this force the bending of the member takes place and that is called bending moment so that means deflection of the member takes place because of the bending and the moment which causes the bending of the member is called bending moment so we are going to find what is the bending moment so the moment which causes the bending of the member is called the bending moment so because of this force some moment is developed and because of that the member deflects so that is known as bending moment so this shear force and bending moment diagram in this topic we will discuss on that is over a beam so what is a beam so if we see the beam is a horizontal member so that means the beam is a horizontal member which is a three dimensional body now if we see in three dimensional figure so this is a beam so which has three dimensions one of the dimension is the say length this is the length of the member and this is the width of the member and this is say thickness of the member now as per as the definition of beam so it is a horizontal member
So first point is it is a horizontal member. Which has three dimensions. So what is shown here? Length, width and thickness. One of the dimension is much larger than or much much larger than other two dimensions other two dimensions that is l length of the member is much much larger than W and T and the third point which takes loads vertical to its axial plane. to its axial plane. So now, this is the member. So if we say this is the axis of the member. Now, this axis is contained by this plane. So this plane is called This plane is known as the axial plane and all the load which is acting over this member is perpendicular to the axial plane. All the load which is coming over the member is perpendicular to this axial plane. So, so we will define the beam. Beam is a horizontal member means it is horizontal or, or parallel to the ground. So, horizontal member. Number one. Number two. One of the dimension is much, much larger than the other two dimensions. That is, in this case, L is very, very large as compared to width and thickness of the member. And which takes loads vertical to its axial plane. So, this is the axial plane. The plane which contains the axis of the body is called the axial plane. And all the loads coming over the member is vertical to the axial plane. So, this is the definition of beam. Now, we will see the various types of beam we will discuss in this topic. That is, types of beams. types of beams. So, in this topic, we will see five types of beams. So, number one is a cantilever beam. Cantilever beam. So, what is a cantilever beam? The beam. So, we will we'll just represent beam by a line instead of three dimensional view will represent the beam by a line. So, the beam, beam is a horizontal member. It is parallel to ground. So, if this is the ground, so this is parallel to the ground and one end of the member is fixed. That means, Cantilever beam is a beam which one end is fixed and other end is free. So, that beam is known as cantilever beam. Now, the load is acting over the beam. So, let say W1, W2 point loads are acting over the beam. So, when the load is acting over the beam, a reaction will develop at the fixed end that is say R A. 
So we are giving the name A B. The name of the beam is A B. The loads W one and W two are acting on the beam, and the reaction reaction developed here R A. So we will see R A will be equal to W one plus W two because the the reaction also will be equal to vertical downward loads W1 plus W2 so RA will be equal to W1 plus W2 as well as a fixed moment will develop at the fixed end the moment okay we will calculate the moment afterwards moment is equal to the force into distance from the moment center so a moment center will be here so this one say it is L2 distance and this one say l1 distance so l1 so if we calculate the moment it will come w1 l1 plus w2 l2 so you can see this is a anti clockwise moment developed at the fixed end so the first kind of beam that is cantilever beam the beam Whose one end is fixed, that kind of beam is called cantilever beam. Now we will see the second kind of beam, that is simply supported beam. Simply supported beam. Now the beam, who both the ends are resting over, just simply supports over simply supports. So both the ends are supported, and the beam is resting over just two end supports. So let the name of the beam is A B. So this is the support A, and this is support B. So beam is resting over two end supports. That type that type of beam is known as simply supported beam. So here, say load W is acting. So W is the vertical load acting on the beam. Now let the reactions developed at support a and support b are given by r a and r b so so here also vertically downward load will be equal to the reaction developed at the support that is r a plus r b is equal to w so the beam whose ends are resting over Two end supports, so that is called simply supported beam. Now we will see the third kind of beam, that is overhang beam. Overhang beam. Now. The beam, whose either one end or both the end is extended beyond the support. So here the beam is AB, which is resting over two supports at point A and point C, and this right end is extended beyond the support, or it can be. Both the ends are extended beyond the supports. Say supports are at point A and B. So you can see the left end and right end is extended beyond the support. So if the if the beams are resting over two supports, but either one end or both the ends are extended beyond the support, then that kind of beam is called. overhang beam and the load load can be any kind of load we will come down to load 
ओके से हेयर डब्लू वन डब्लू टू आर लोड एक्टिंग ओवर द बीम नाउ विल सी द फोर्थ काइंड ऑफ बीम दैट इज कॉल्ड ए कंटिन्यूस बीम सो फोर्थ काइंड ऑफ बीम इज कंटिन्यूस बीम so if there are more than two supports over which the beam is resting then that kind of beam is called continuous beam so a beam which is supported by more than two supports two are the end supports and number of intermediate support it may be total number of supports may be three or more than three okay so a b the beam so a and b are the main supports and rest are the intermediate supports so if there are, there are more than two supports, supports then, then the beam is called a continuous beam two end supports are called the main main support are called intermediate support so this kind of beam is known as continuous beam and the last kind is known as a fixed beam so a beam whose both the ends are rigidly fixed by two end supports so that kind of beam is called a fixed beam in this if the load is applied over the beam then say the name of the beam is ab so the reaction will develop at the ends that is ra and rb at the reaction along with this reaction at both the fixed end the moment will also develop that is ma and say moment at and b that is mb so this beam is called the fixed beam the beam whose both the ends are rigidly fixed at the ends so that kind of beam is called fixed beam so in this beam whenever the load any kind of load is applied over the beam so two reaction as well as as well as two moments at the ends will develop in this kind of beam so these two beams that is continuous beam and the fixed beam these are called statically indeterminate beam statically indeterminate beam so what does it mean so it means statically indeterminate beam because we have two static equations that is sum of the forces is zero and sum of the moment produced is also zero so by that two equation we cannot solve the problem that's why these two beams are coming under statically indeterminate beam but Last three beams. What we have discussed that is cantilever beam, cantilever beam, then simply supported beam, then overhang beam. So these three beams are coming under statically determinate beam. What is statically determinate beam means static equations are sufficient to solve the problem that's why these are called statically determinate beam okay so i hope up to this it is clear now 
or we will go to the types of loads acting on the beam types of loads acting on the beam so in this first type of load that is called a point load first kind of load is called a point load so let this is the beam a cantilever beam is shown in figure so in this say w1 w2 like this loads are acting so the point point load the magnitude whole magnitude of the load is passing through a point so we know point has no dimension point has no dimension so that means it will not occupy any area what is exactly definition of a point it is the location in a coordinate system so that is called a point and we are denoting the point by a dot so that means whole magnitude of the load is acting at that particular point so that kind of load is called point load and second type of load is called uniformly distributed load uniformly distributed load so if we see this type of load the load value is evenly distributed over the whole length of the beam or or part of the beam and it is given by so this is expressed by newton or kg and this one this kind of load is expressed by that is w newton per meter length or per centimeter length or per millimeter length so that means uniformly distributed load the load value is evenly distributed over the whole mem length of the member whole length of the member or part of the length so here the length of the member is l and the load is distributed evenly what is, what does it mean by evenly so if you take 1 meter length the load value or magnitude of load is w and if you take another 1 meter length so load at every unit length that will remain same that is every meter length that will remain same so that means the load is evenly distributed over the whole span of the member or part of the member okay so here if we calculate what is the total load acting over the beam total load acting over the beam total load on the beam so what is the length of the member is l and per unit length the load acting is w newton so we can write w into l newton is the total load acting over the member and we should know what is the center of gravity of the load acting over this member so as the load is evenly distributed over the member center of gravity will pass through the exactly center of the member that is at a distance l by 2 from the free end or or we can say l by 2 from the fixed end okay so this is the uniformly distributed load and third kind of load is uniformly varying load uniformly varying load so this type of load varies from one end to other end or it may be partly over the member but varies at every point so diagrammatically if we see 
Say this is the member. Member means second deliver beam. The load may be acting zero at one point. Means intensity of load zero at one point and maximum at the other end. Say W is the maximum magnitude which is acting at the free end in this member. And at this point, the load value is zero. So, if the name of the member is A B, so at point A, what is the load acting? The magnitude of the load is zero. At the free end, what is the magnitude of the load? That is W. Now, we have to find, say, the length of the member is L. Now, what is the total load acting over this member? So, to find the total load acting over the member, we will take the average load. What is the average load acting over the member? The zero plus W by two. This is the average load into length of the member, and that is total load on the member. Total load. So E G L two half into W into L, or this represents the area of area of this diagram of this triangle. So you can see half into base into height. That is half into base into height. That is area of triangle. So that's why this load is also known as triangular load. So uniformly varying load is also known as triangular load, and it is given by the area of this load diagram. Clear? And we should know what is the center of gravity of the load. So for this triangle, we know. Center of gravity will be located here at a distance l by three from the free end. L by three distance from the free end. So the whole load, that is W L by two, which is acting through this point at a distance l by three from the free end for this kind of loading. Okay, so the and there may be a fourth kind of loading that is that is combination of all the above. What is combination of combination of all the above, all the above. So so we have seen three kind of load. So let this is the beam. So what the beam? Say point load W1 is acting. Say this is the UDL is acting from this point to this point, and the load value is given by small W per meter length, small W unit per meter length, and also it may have This uniformly varying load partly over the over the beam partly. So this also it is acting partly. So the these distances will be given in the problem so that you can calculate you can calculate easily the to total moment produced on the beam. Okay, this length say this length is a. And this length over which it is acting, say from here to here, it is B. So this length will be given to you, and the magnitude of this load, say, the maximum magnitude it is P acting at the at this end. So that means the combined load. So it may be point load, it may be uniformly distributed load it may be uniformly varying load or all the loads may be simultaneously acting over a member now we will move to the definition of shear force 
as per this diagram what is shear force so in this chapter in this topic the shear force is defined as the algebraic sum of sum of all vertical loads all vertical loads acting to to one side of the section consider one side of the section considered so what is the meaning of this the algebraic sum of all the vertical loads acting to one side of the section consider so so if you consider a beam say this is a cantilever beam in this beam say w1 w2 W three etc. Lo point loads are acting. Now, if we consider a section, say X X section, we have considered which is at a distance X from the free end. So, if we consider this X X section, what will be the shear force on X X section? So, as per the definition. Algebraic sum of all vertical loads acting to one side of the section. So this is our section. So one side, say right side. Right side, if we take the pro shear force will be that is only one load, one vertical load is acting to the right side of the section. So that means W one will be the shear force. If we consider another section, say Y Y section. so we can write here shear force at x x that is only w1 and if we check the shear force at section y y the total vertical load or algebraic sum of vertical loads acting to right of y y section that is w1 and w2 so we can write w1 plus w2 this is the algebraic sum and from any for, for any section if we consider this section if we calculate the shear force from right side or from left side shear force will be same at the same section similarly if we take y y section shear force from the right side or from the left side it will be same so this is the definition the algebraic sum of all vertical loads acting to one side of the section is called the shear force acting on that section now we will say the definition of bending moment so in this chapter the bending moment in this chapter bending moment the bending moment at any any section so the definition is the bending moment at any section of the beam is defined as as the algebraic sum the bending moment at any section of the beam is is the algebraic sum of is the algebraic sum of moments of all vertical forces acting to one side of the section
about the section about the section this is the definition of bending moment the bending moment at any section of the loaded beam is the algebraic sum of moments of all the vertical forces acting to one side of the section about that section now let this is the beam say it is a cantilever beam w1 w2 w3 are the loads acting over the beam at a distance okay distance will be mentioned here now consider a section xx and say another section yy so at section xx what is the bending moment at section xx is the moment produced by by all the vertical load acting one side of the section about that section so if we know the distance say distance is l1 now moment produced by load w1 about x x section is given by w1 into l1 so it is the algebraic sum of moments of all vertical forces acting to one side of the beam one side of the section and about that section so now if we consider the section yy what will be the bending moment at section yy that is the algebraic sum of moments of all the vertical forces acting to one side of the section section is y y say at the right side of the section what are the moments so w1 will cause the moment so the distance if we multiply so it will be say it is at a distance y so it will be w1 into y okay and if the distance is say l2 so w2 into l2 so algebraic sum of moments of all vertical forces acting to one side of the section about that section is known as the bending moment as per the definition now we'll see what is called bending moment diagram and shear force diagram so so first we will see shear force diagram what is shear force diagram shear force diagram now consider the beam a cantilever beam the beam is under point load say only one point load w1 is acting over the beam now consider a section xx which is at a distance x from the free end and give the name of the beam that is ab is the beam and w1 is the point load acting at the free end of the beam now what is the shear force so now we have seen shear force at section xx what is the shear force at section xx it is the algebraic sum of all vertical loads acting to one side of the section that is at the right side of this xx section what is the vertical load acting that is w1 in downward direction okay so we can write it is w1 now if we slide this section to point b so what should be the load it is the total load acting right at the right side each w1 so when we are talking about sliding the section to point b means one point left to point b one point there are infinite number of points so one point left to point b so shear force at point b that will be equal to w1 now slide the section to 
point A. When you are talking about point A, that is one point right to point A. So if we slide the section up to this point, so shear force we will get at point A. So total vertical load acting right side of the section, when section is at point A, that is also W1. So we can write here it is also W1. And if we draw the shear force diagram for this beam, so let this is the baseline, what is baseline and shear force at this point is W1, shear force at this point is W1 and it will remain constant throughout the span. So what is the usefulness of drawing this shear force diagram? So that means Always it will not be a this uniform diagram. So sometimes so the diagram may vary. So if this is baseline, sometimes the diagram may be like this also. Okay, we'll see further in cantilever beam. So the usefulness of drawing this diagram is so if we require at this point what is the shear force? So draw a vertical line from this point through this point. So it will give you the shear force at that point acting on the beam. Similarly, if we require the shear force at this point, draw a vertical line. So it will give the shear force at that particular point. So that means this diagram gives the shear force at every point of the beam. So at all the points, it shows the the, 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 that means the shear force of all the points each can be obtained by using this diagram and that's why this is called the shear force diagram. Now we will see the bending moment diagram. Now for this same loading if we check what is the bending moment say W1 is the load is acting say W1 we are giving 50 that is Newton load is acting at the free end. So consider a section that is XX at a distance X on the free end. So bending moment at section XX so it is given by the load that is 50 Newton and the distance is X so this is Newton meter X is in meter so 50 X Newton meter now slide the section to point B so bending moment at point B where X value will be 0 so X value if we put 0 that will be 0 and slide the section to point A, so we will get bending moment at point A where this value will be L, so that is 50 into L. L will have some definite value, so this will be Newton meter. Now for drawing the bending moment diagram, draw a baseline and further we will see that this bending moment are negative bending moment so this is your baseline okay and at this point at point b it is 0 at this point it is say 50 l is given by this distance by by some scale and the variation of bending moment bending moment varies from point to point with x that is variation is linear variation or you can say straight line variation so that means so if we join these two point so it will give the bending moment diagram and this will be negative so we'll see why it is negative and the put the hatching line ha ha hatching lines so this will be your bending moment diagram for this loading condition okay and 
this bending moment diagram if we if we require bending moment at this point draw a vertical line so this will give the bending moment at that particular point similarly if we require bending moment at this point so we will get bending moment at this point also for this beam it is seen from the diagram bending moment will be maximum at the fixed end and for this kind of loading bending moment is zero at the free end okay this formation this information also we can get from here this diagram so bending usefulness of bending moment diagram is at any point of the beam we can get the bending moment now next we'll say the sign conventions so sign convention so before drawing this shear force and bending moment diagram we should know the sign convention so for shear force so let this is the section if right side of the section is load is acting in downward direction at the right side of the section this is your x axis section what do you have seen now so at the right side of the section if the load is acting downward then the shear force will be positive and if it is upward then shear force will be negative so at the right side if the load is acting in downward direction then that shear force will be positive and in upward direction if the load is acting that will be negative so in the same sense that is if load is acting downward at the left end left side then shear force will be negative and if load is acting right uh, upward at the left side of the section then it will be positive so this will be the sign convention for shear force and and the sign convention for bending moment sign convention or bending moment so let this is the beam if the beam is acted upon by this kind of moments then the beam will bend in this fashion and this is considered as positive bending moment and if the load if the moment is acting like this okay then the bending of the beam will take in this fashion so it is negative bending moment okay that's all for this video i hope the basic idea regarding how to draw the bending moment diagram as well as shear force diagram is clear so in next video we'll take the examples of cantilever beam and other beams with various kinds of loading and we'll solve the problems i hope you can easily understand with this so that's all for today friends and if this video is helpful to you please like share and subscribe the channel thank you and we'll meet you soon in the next video